Hi, a pleasure being here today and talk about holistic life cycle management about batteries. Uh, well, what we offer is battery analytic solutions, obviously. It's a key really to go into this new decade of uh, battery powered uh, mobility, but also stabilizing uh, renewable energy grids. So what we're seeing here is just kind of the, the teaser. Why is that important? Well, if you look on the left side here, you see electric vehicle sales are just spiking everywhere from North America, Europe, China, but even beyond. And we see that all of the major automotive OEMs are now moving towards all electric lineups already before the end of this decade. And a similar story uh, occurs in the energy storage market where these systems are increasingly being used to stabilize grids, to do peak shaving uh, behind the meter and so on. And why is it important to take a look at this battery from a technological perspective? Where, well, the, the battery determines all of the key characteristics that customers care about. So if you're buying an electric car, you want range, you want to be able to quickly recharge the vehicle when the range is out. And after all, you kind of want that over an extended period of time. So having a high residual value or rather long lifetime is incredibly important. To deliver something like that, OEMs must really rethink the way that they come about this and really take control of that entire life cycle and not only until the start of production. So I, I will guide you through this idea of the battery life cycle, starting with development in life and then have also a brief look at second life and what happens afterwards. Starting with the development, what you're faced with is this optimization uh, challenge, right? You can either have a very cheap system that you probably can also get into the market quickly. So time to market, obviously, crucial element, but it lacks the sophistication uh, and reliability and quality of the system. So you will end up having to pay excessive warranty fees or repair costs to your customers, also really ruining your brand positioning. The other extreme is something where we see very sophisticated battery systems very high quality battery systems, sometimes even very conservative, that would actually lead to a less attractive battery. I think it's something that we've seen in the BMW i3. The battery is really good. It really lasts forever, but it is so expensive that the car really becomes unattractive. It's so conservative in the setup that really the range and so on is not very attractive. So you must find this cost optimum and obviously the performance optimum for each system very quickly with a very short time to market. And um, there's a lot of topics you need to do here, but obviously most of that comes surrounding moving more towards a simulation environment, incorporating field data uh, and kind of moving forward. But also, when you do this, you must take risks, right? And to control these risks in the in-life is really the second step. So let's take a look at what is going on here. So we've seen the consumer really cares about the battery and the performance of the battery over the lifetime. But consumers don't really trust the battery because they're being told and they know from their smartphones and everywhere, batteries are not the most reliable component, right? So you see their capacity fade away, their power capabilities fade. So OEMs react with that. When we see warranties in the combustion engine era being like two, maybe three years, we now see OEMs moving towards something uh, of eight years or 160,000 kilometers, which is pretty much the entire lifetime of that vehicle uh, before it's really towards the kind of end of life use cases that are more limited. So the warranty risk really peaks. And to just put that into perspective for an OEM, already 100,000 vehicles in the field translate to more than 1 billion euro in assets and corresponding warranty risk. I mean, you see replacement of battery costing between 10 to 40,000 euros per car. So you don't want many batteries coming out of control meaning that it's really important that once you are in the field, you keep the control of the vehicle and you can take preventive and then mitigating action uh, in terms of after sales services, in terms of software updates and uh, optimization of the way that these vehicles are being used. When we now take kind of a look at the sustainability aspect of a circular economy, uh, obviously that's why we have the 
battery life cycle circle here, second life, end of life options are really important. Um, what is possible? I mean, we're talking now eight, nine, 10, 12 year old batteries. What can you do? I mean, obviously you can just reuse it. An example is same vehicle, but just different use case. So you have a lorry driver driving every day the five hours that he can do before kind of um, needing to stop for a break. So kind of 500 kilometer range, moving to someone who's just driving around their neighborhood to deliver stuff to, to local stores, just kind of creating less than 100 kilometers of, of driving distance per day. So just reducing the depth of this charge or use part of the battery leads to that optimized use case or optimized use even beyond the uh, the initial end of life that you would see with the more extreme first use case. Or you repurpose, right? You take the battery out of the vehicle and you put it into a forklift or you put it into a stationary energy storage, which is kind of the link towards what we've seen on the first slide, the energy market, where you, then you can use it to stabilize grids, where you can use it to trade, to use the peaks of when you have sun and wind and you really want to take out that energy because it's very cheap and supply it to, to the grid or to the energy electricity companies when uh, it's, it's night and it's, there's no wind and you kind of run out of energy options. So you just supply it back to the grid and you earn uh, this arbitrage. Well, and then obviously, sorry for the last one, is really recycling it, right? Putting it back into a new generation of batteries. Um, it's not really our core. That's why I only touch lightly on it. When we, we really look at this life cycle, what is possible? What do you want to achieve? And obviously, you want to be quicker in the market. You, we see everyone is really trying to push out the new models. You want to have a higher battery. Sorry, there's quicker time to market twice. The other one is obviously a better system, better design for the, the purposes of uh, the, 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 the vehicle, of the user, what they want. You want to have a higher battery quality. So you want to make sure that you have uh, a good check of what comes out of your production belts and what is being shipped to the customers and then possibly also update throughout the life with software updates to increase the performance, to sell additional range or to come up with uh, attractive financial models, which is kind of also leading towards these higher residual values which is really important, especially for OEMs these days, as quite a lot of the leasing contracts really go out from the OEM banks themselves. Then you have improved fleet management, which is not only important for OEMs, but it's also important for bus operators, truck operators. So you really want to know how far can I go? How long can I do this? When will I need a new vehicle? What use case is the best for my car? And then obviously having all of that financially covered with extended warranties, by, for example, a company like Munich Re, a partner of ours. And then last but not least, I touched on that, have a profitable second life and make this end-of-life cost center a profit center. Really get the most of it and use something like the EU regulation that you have where you need to take care of the entire supply chain and recycling options and, and make that into, into something that you actually benefit from. This is where we come in. Uh, just a brief look on our software. What we're using is just field data, lab data of the batteries, have a, a clear data structure, run our analytics combination of traditional um, uh, kind of analytical approaches as well as uh, machine learning, run it through platform services such as alerting, fleet management and so on, and enable uh, solutions along that entire life cycle. And uh, I mean, the promise obviously goes with us, uh, your transition towards battery-powered mobility will be quicker, more profitable, and ultimately, I think that's a very important part associated with less risk for your balance sheet or for your shareholders. Looking at TWICE to wrap it up, I mean, uh, we're a company from Munich combining very strong battery and machine learning expertise on a scalable software um, that you can just deploy on any kind of fleet and any kind of uh, um, production line. Um, we have over seven years of uh, research and development expertise, around about 75, 80 employees at the moment, uh, several patents um, in our portfolio, our own battery lab on premises. And what we see is ourselves as a partner of a wider ecosystem. So working with Munich Re, TÜV Rheinland, uh, Microsoft, AWS, SAP to really create 
this comprehensive value for our customers along the entire life cycle. And I think that's it from my side. Thank you very much for listening. And now I'm really much, very much looking forward to also discussing these topics in the panel. Thank you very much.